Hey foodies, welcome to Cooking Shooking. Today let's bake off a velvet cake. So let's make some red velvet cake. Egg is baking without oven. You will need one and a half cups of plain flour maida, half a tablespoon of cocoa powder, three four teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of baking soda sifted twice. One third cup of canola oil, two cups of salt, three fourth cup of milk, half a cup of powdered sugar, three fourth cup of condensed milk. Here I'm using homemade condensed milk. You can also check out our recipe how to make condensed milk at home if you wish to. A teaspoon of red food coloring and a teaspoon of vanilla essence. So let us start making it. We are going to heat up a cooker and add in our salt to it, a wire stand, and a perforated plate. Now I'm going to quickly close this and we're going to heat this up in medium flame till we are getting ready with the batter. So let's get up with the baking process. We're going to take one third cup of Hudson canola oil to a mixing bowl. As we all know, cakes made with oil are pretty moist and stays moist in refrigerator as well. So here I'm using Hudson canola oil for making our cake. Sometimes what happens is the flavor of the oil comes in the cake and we can feel the oily flavor in the cake. With this canola oil, nothing happens like that. So it's very neutral in flavor as well. And by using canola oil, we are reducing up to 20% of the fat. So it's great to use this canola oil. Now I'm going to add in my powdered sugar here. So now we're going to whip this. So I'm going to add in my homemade condensed milk to this. Now we're going to whip this for about three to four minutes or until it gets very smooth and fluffy. So this has started a little bit of clumping and it starts leaving the sides. At that point, we're going to add in half of our milk and the vanilla essence. Now in low speed, we're going to whip this for about a minute or two. So it looks gorgeous to me. Now I'm going to add in half of my plain flour mixture, actually our dry flour mixture and whip this in low speed. Looks good. Now I'm going to add in rest of my flour mixture or dry mixture and another slow mix around. So this looks perfectly mild chocolate cake batter. Now I'm going to add in my red food color to the milk. I prefer using dry food coloring instead of liquid one over here. Give this a gentle stir and be careful otherwise it may splash and this can be pretty colorful. So to the cake batter I am going to add in rest of my milk and color mixture. Now ideally this will be an ideal choice to use a spatula but I am going to just go with this machine once again. So here comes my spatula and we are going to just give it a good mix around. If you feel the color is not bright enough and it's not red enough, it's going pink like raspberry pink or raspberry red, then you can definitely add some red food coloring or I mean orange food coloring or lemon yellow food coloring to adjust the color. So this looks all perfect and perfectly red to me. Now I'm going to pour this batter inside our greased and lined 7 inch spring foam cake tin. You can also use regular cake tin if you wish to. So our cake batter is all ready to go inside our cooker for about 35 to 40 minutes in medium to low flame. You can also bake this in an electric oven or your oven at 180 degrees centigrade for about 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Our cake is baked for about 40 minutes. Now I'm to take it out and keep it on a wire rack so that it cools down to room temperature. After that I'm to freeze this for about 4 hours. We are going to start off by adding one third cup of butter to a mixing bowl and cream this well for about a minute. So our butter is all fluffy and perfect. Now we are going to add in little bit of powdered sugar. In total we are going to add about one and a half cups of powdered sugar. You can also use icing sugar but I have freshly powdered some sugar right now. We are going to add about a third of a cup at a time and we are going to whip this well. So at last comes our last addition. Be sure to whip it really well in between additions because if you don't whip it nicely, you'll, you can get a gritty and grainy icing. So make sure you whip it really well. So now I am going to whip this for about 5 minutes on high. Also scrape down the sides in between so that everything gets involved. I am going to add little bit of vanilla to it. 
about half a teaspoon or so now I'm going to whip this for about five minutes to this butter cream now I'm going to add in my cream cheese you can check out our video how to make cream cheese at home if you wish to and we're going to whip this for about three to four minutes So our cream cheese frosting is all ready. If you want to use only this frosting, you can directly apply it on the cake and use it. I like to make it a little more creamier, fluffier and delicious. So I'm going to whip about two cups of whipping cream to stiff peaks. I'm going to add a dollop of whipped cream to this so that it gets light. Otherwise, if you add all at once, it will all get mellowed down. So I'm going to add a little bit of it and give it a good whiz around. Now I'm going to add in all my whipped cream to this. I'm going to use a spatula at first. Now I'm going to whip this well. So our frosting is already stiff and perfect. Now let's slice up the cake. So our cake is frozen for about 4 hours and then I have kept it out for about an hour. So that it comes down a little bit to room temperature kind of thing. Now I'm going to slice it up and make the top leveled. Now I'm going to mark where I want the three slices to be. So I've made the three slices. If you wish to get rid of this little bit brown edges, you can definitely get rid of this because we want a red velvet and not a brown velvet. So I'm just trim off about half an inch of this. You can use the excess bits in cake pops or puddings or whatever you wish for. So to the turntable, I'm going to apply a little bit of our cream cheese frosting and place our bottommost layer here. Now I'm going to smear sugar syrup on top of this. And then our frosting. Now I'm going to place the second layer, sugar syrup, and I'm going to repeat the process. So our cake is assembled. Now we're going to do a crumb coat, which will cover up all the crumbs and all the empty areas which has no filling or our frosting. So slowly, we are going to turn this around. So basically how it works is you take a long spatula, an angle palette knife or a palette knife and keep it in an angle, straight up and move it around. So sides are pretty much done. Now we are going to cover the top. Usually we start with the top but as this is a frosting, I started with the sides. So our crumb coat is ready, now this goes into the freezer for about 30 minutes and then we are going to do the final icing. So our crumb coat is set, now we are going to make the final icing. So I am going to place a big dollop of this frosting on the top and start spreading it. Now I am going to take a little bit on my spatula and keep it on a side like this and spread it on the side. Things can get pretty messy with this icing so you can scrape the excess like this. So our cake is iced, a little bit of peekaboos are totally perfect as we are going to cover this cake with the red velvet dust. So I am going to take it out and place it on a cake board. I have grinded some of our cake to a powder consistency, now we are going to spread it on the cake. Now I'm going to blow some air to it so that the excessive get out. For the sides I'm going to use a fork.
for making the two tone icing you would need some of your cream or whipped cream here i'm using whipped cream as i'm out of the cream cheese frosting right now as i used all of them in the cupcakes so i'm going to color this with some color liquid food color is preferable here i'm using rose pink you would also need a piping bag with a large star tip now i'm going to take the colored whipped cream and place this in one side of the piping bag going all the way around all the way down i mean make sure you're not touching the other edge try to be in the one line so something like that now i'm going to take the white whipped cream i mean plain whipped cream and let it go inside on the other edge so a cordial of pink and white here so let's pipe up our cake so here is our red velvet ready refrigerate this and enjoy just melts in the mouth so make sure you try this and let me know how does this go for you so do check out the recipe on our website cooking shooting.in as well thank you for watching do subscribe bye take care